Okay, we have three graphs below, and each graph is showing a different kind of system of equations. The first graph has two lines that are sharing the same set of lines. When we have a line on top of another, that is an infinite solution. The second graph is showing two lines that are parallel to each other. That means those lines are never going to touch, so they're never going to have a common solution. So that is no solution. And then our third graph has two lines that are intersecting or that cross. When lines intersect or cross, they have a single solution, so we say that that is one solution. Okay, we are going to need to look at a system of equations and be able to choose which one has exactly one solution. So when I look at this first set of systems on A, y equals 3x plus 1 and y equals x plus 1, what I want to do is I want to identify the slope in each equation. So the slope in this one, m equals 3. In the second equation, the slope is, again, the number before the x. And this one doesn't have a number, so that means its slope is 1. When I see different slopes, that means we have one solution. So different slopes equals one solution. And that is the answer we are looking for. Now, I'm also going to look at B. And I know it says without solving, but I can manipulate the equation. So when I have x plus y equals 10, I can manipulate that and move the x to the other side by doing its inverse negative x. So this equation is really y equals negative x plus 10. I then can do that with the second equation too because it's not in slope intercept form either. So 2x plus 2y equals 20. I want to move the x by doing its inverse. The inverses cancel. 2y comes down. And I'm just going to put it in order, negative 2x plus 20. Now, I know that 2y is equal, but I want to know what 1y equals. So I'm going to divide everything by that coefficient of 2. 2 divided by 2 gives me 1y. Negative 2 divided by 2 gives me negative 1x. And 20 divided by 2 gives me positive 10. So at this point, I want to do the same thing. I want to compare their slopes. So the slope in this one, m equals negative 1. The slope in this one is also m equals negative 1. As soon as I see two slopes that are the same, I know that I'm looking at either no solution or infinite. So this cannot be my answer. I will say, though, that if we look at the end of this equation and look at the y-intercepts, this one has a y-intercept of positive 10. This one also has a y-intercept of positive 10. So this is an example of an infinite solution. OK, on our next one, it says, without graphing, how do you know that the solution to the following two equations is no solution? So I need to think about what does no solution look like? Well, no solution, the equations will have the same slope. And they will have different y-intercepts. So I'm just going to check that now and see. The slope in this one is 2. The slope in that one is 2. Yep, same slope. Then I'm going to check my y-intercepts. We have a positive 3, and we have a negative 5. Different y-intercepts, exactly. So that's what I would write for my answer. I know this because they have, they have the same slope. And different y-intercepts. OK, the next one, without graphing, how do you know that the solution to the following two equations is one solution? Well, again, I know that one solution means that we are going to have different slopes. And so that's what I'm looking for in this. I want to find out what are the slopes in both of these equations. Well, this one has nothing in front of it, so its slope is 1. 
This one has a three in front of the X, so its slope is three. So right there, I, I see that I do have a one solution, and the reason why is they have different slopes. Okay, our next question. What is the solution to the system of equations graphed on the right? Now, I know when I see intersecting lines, that means one solution. But the problem is, I cannot write one solution as my answer. I need to write this exact point on the graph. Now remember, we always start at the origin, we move sideways first. So we are going to the side for one positive unit. So my x value is 1. I'm then going up for one positive unit, so my y value is 1. So on a graph, you always move side to side first, that is your x, then up or down, which is your y. Remember, this side is positive, this side is negative, if you're going in that direction. This side is positive, this side is negative. Okay, use substitution to solve the system of linear equations. So I notice that in my first equation here, this one is solved for y, and so that means that that information that I boxed is going to go in place of y. So I'm going to start writing the second equation, negative 5x plus, when I get to y, I can put a parenthesis there, x plus 1 from the first equation goes in there, I close the parenthesis, equals 13. Okay, so I have a plus outside, so I'm doing positive 1 times x, positive 1 times 1. So negative 5x, positive 1 times x is plus x, 1x, positive 1 times 1 is positive 1, equals 13. So what I notice here is I have like terms on this side, right here, negative 5x plus 1x. Okay, so I need to calculate what that is. If I have 5 negatives and 1 positive, that means I have four negatives left. So negative 4x plus 1 equals 13. I'm trying to get x by itself. There is that constant of 1, so I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. Now I have negative 4x equals 12. And finally, negative 4 is in front of my x, my co coefficient. I'm going to divide by that to find out exactly what 1x equals, because negative 4 divided by 4, negative 4 is 1x. Positive divided by a negative I know is a negative, and 12 divided by negative 4 then is negative 3. So that is my x equals negative 3. I'm going to plop that up here. Now I have to figure out what y equals. Well, I'm going to use x plus 1 equals y, that very first equation. And I know that I'm going to take this negative 3, and I'm going to put it in place of x. So I'm going to rewrite it as negative 3 plus 1 equals y. So again, if I have three negatives and one positive, I'm left with two negatives. So negative 2 equals y. That is my second answer. I put it in there. Okay, our next question. I see that this one is solved for x. So that means it's going to go in place of x in the second equation. So when I start to write this, I'm going to put 6 parentheses negative 1 over 2 y plus 10. Close my parentheses. Then I'm going to continue after the x. Minus 5y equals 12. Well, whenever I see parentheses, I know I'm multiplying. So 6 times negative 1 half. So I'm trying to get the negative half of 6. Well, 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. 1 times 2 is 2, so negative 6 halves y. 6 times 10 is plus 60, minus 5y equals 12. Well, negative 6 divided by 2 I know is negative 3y plus 60 minus 5y equals 12. So here I am noticing I have like terms again. I have a negative 3y and I have a negative 5y. So I want to combine those. So if I have three negatives and then I have five more negatives, I now have eight negative y's plus 60 equals 12. I'm going to subtract 60 from both sides. 
negative 8y equals negative 48. I'm going to divide by the negative 8, and I get positive y equals 6. Now, this is my y value, so I have to put it in for y in my answer. Okay, so now I'm going to check and get my x value. So I'm going to use that first equation again. I'm going to put it in red over here. So x equals negative 1 half y plus 10. This 6 goes in for y. x equals negative 1 half times 6 plus 10. Well, negative 1 half of 6 is negative 3 plus 10. And again, if I have 3 negatives and I have 10 positives, I'm going to end up with x equaling 7 positives, and so that is my answer over here.